Hello everyone, in this episode of Eddie Bytes, I'll be talking about how to give effective instructions, especially when you're not available face to face to explain to your students. I've been hearing a lot of lecturers or teachers who are complaining that uh, whatever they give to their students, they don't seem to understand or did the uh, opposite of what was required. Now, it happens a lot in face to face, but uh, the benefit of having it done in face-to-face mode is that we get a chance to clarify uh, in front of them and give necessary uh, further explanation. However, in the online setting, it's very hard for you to monitor everyone. Fortunately, there are several ways that you can do to overcome this problem or to reduce the chances of students misunderstanding your instructions. The first way is to change your written instruction into a, into verbal format. A good way is to record a video like this, a short one, just to explain what you expect your student to achieve or to complete. Or it's good enough to have an audio version. You can actually share it on WhatsApp, on Telegram. You know, at least they can listen to you um, explaining the instruction. Or if you have students who may have difficulty understanding certain languages, then you can also have a translated version as well. So like. Uh, in, in our context, I would explain certain things in Malay as well. So put it in a video format or in audio format so they can actually refer to it. Uh, sometimes when you ask them to read the instruction, they may misunderstand what you uh, actually put in. The second way is to, of course, relook at your instruction. Sometimes uh, what I noticed was Lectures tend to be overwhelmed with the way they use the sentences or the syntax or the structure of the language. Um, and, you know, even mul- after multiple reading, it causes uh, confusion. So revise the way you write your instruction. It would be good if you want it to be more specific. You can actually list them down in set by set mode, like, you know, number one, number two, number three, and focus of the verb. Focus more on the verb, like number one, you know, do this, do that. If it's a problem-based kind of uh, task, then you might want to structure it nicely. Like this is the problem and your job is to find out solution. So the way you write the instruction is also critical. I would also advise you to have your instruction written with a personal voice um, rather than sounding like it was lifted from a textbook. So you can say like in this task, um, you are required to do 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 do. I expect you to do, 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 do. So using this kind of personal voice actually increases uh, the uh, readability of your instruction. And the third way, of course, is to make use of visuals. I think apart from video and audio, you could also make use of uh, visuals like infographic or even um, a simple uh, illustration of what you want them to do. Sometimes if you draw it on a piece of paper and then share with the gr- with the group, it will be also uh, useful for them to visualize what you want them to complete. The fourth way is to make use of real-time uh, collaborative tools like Google Docs because as they are doing, you can actually monitor them and then explain to them what went wrong and what should be improved rather than wait until the end to fi- to see the final product. So this is another way to monitor uh, your instruction. Another way to improve the way you give instruction to your students is to always accompany it with examples. You can make use of the examples that you have from the previous semesters or previous uh, uh, tasks or previous group of learners or even a rough, uh, you know, example of draft outline that you can use as an example because example actually helps the student to understand what you want them to, to achieve. Also, I would like to advise you to keep track on the way the student react to your instruction. Sometimes uh, we shouldn't be too fast to judge them because um, the way we give the instruction could be misleading or we are having a different level of thinking and uh, they couldn't get what we actually visualize in our mind. So uh, if you notice something wrong with the responses that you have uh, obtained, let's say majority of students do not understand what you wanted, then somehow you might want to talk to them and try to uncover what are the things that confuse them, you know. That would be better rather than quickly saying that, oh, they don't understand my instruction, I don't know how many times I have to tell this, blah, blah, blah. Because sometimes when we do the instruction, we are basing it on what we know. 
and what we know may not be the same as what the students are having so these are quite critical because as educators i think we shouldn't jump quickly into conclusion and um, there's no point for you to be angry anyway after all you what matters more is for you to achieve the intended learning outcome and to help them to achieve this as well um, i hope it could be useful for you improving i would love to hear from you as well so please share and uh, if there are any things that i could assist you in this process please let me know so that's all for this video don't forget to like this video and also to subscribe to my channel for more videos thank you Thank you.